those hot, overcast, humid days that usually depress the human spirit. But not so here today, because this is Derby Day, and a crowd estimated at 120,000 has gathered for the 103rd running of America's greatest racing classic. Mint juleps are sold like soda pop in the milling crowd. They've come from across the country and around the world. Among them, there's a real anticipation that perhaps an especially great occasion may be at hand. For only the ninth time in the history of the race, an unbeaten favorite will go to the post. Of the previous eight, just three managed to win. But the name is everywhere among them. Seattle Slough. Seattle Slough. Is he another secretary? Well, we're going to find out. Good afternoon. I'm Jim McKay. And as the telecast progresses here, you'll also be hearing from my colleagues in commentary, Howard Cosell with Eddie Arcaro, Frank Gifford in our position up on the roof, and Chick Anderson doing the call of the race. The question is very simple. Can he do it or can't he? Will Seattle Slew win? If he doesn't, who might beat him? Well, it could be for the moment uh, trained by Leroy Jolly, who trained the winner on a, a Foolish Pleasure two years ago, and the beaten favorite Honest Pleasure last year. It could be uh, Run Dusty Run. His daddy, Dust Commander, won this race in 1970. It's the same owner, Mrs. Robert N. Lehman. Or it could be John Galbraith Sanhedrin, who was a very fast closing second in the uh, in the Wood Memorial that we telecast a couple of weeks ago. So much, what must it feel like to be Jean Cruguet as you're about to be hoisted onto the back of the unbeaten Seattle Slough? The French jockey who's been criticized in many quarters, despite the fact that he has piloted this horse to six wins in six starts. What must it feel like to be Karen and Mickey Taylor? the owners of this horse, who have never seen the Kentucky Derby in person before, and here's their horse, the top-heavy favorite. And look at Billy Turner, a 36-year-old trainer who has longed for a moment like this, has never had anything even approaching it, and yet has handled this fame and all the questions with great poise and with great good humor, as have all the people connected with Seattle Slough. Only Kruger has been, perhaps, justifiably a little bit defensive about the criticisms that have been leveled at him. What must it be like to be Mrs. Lehman, the owner of Run Dusty Run, who won seven years ago with his daddy, Dust Commander? What must it be like right now to be Leroy Jolly, who saddled the winner, Foolish Pleasure, two years ago, who saddled the beaten favorite, Honest Pleasure, last year, and who now saddles the full brother to Honest Pleasure? They're coming to the racetrack. I can tell you what it feels like to be a spectator. There is actually a slight tremor in the fingers, and there is a queasiness in the stomach, because soon we will hear the song that just does something to you, and I don't care where you're from. Of all the countries represented here today, France or England or the United States or anywhere else, you feel something when, in just a moment, the Murray State University Band will be playing My Old Kentucky Home, that song written by Stephen Foster, a man from Pittsburgh who never saw Kentucky. They're very close to the track, and as soon as they get through this tunnel and come out, my old Kentucky home will begin. 120,000 people. The favorite, remember, a horse that was bought for $17,500. Bargain basement for a champion. Here they come. Ladies and gentlemen, the management of Churchill Downs proudly presents the 103rd running of the Kentucky Derby. They're on the track. 15 spirited horses. 15 lonely jockeys, and awaiting one jockey and one colt, the greatest prize on the American turf, victory in the Kentucky Derby. Who are the horses? Let's go to Howard Cosell and Eddie R. Carroll. All right, Jim, horse number one, part of a smiley Adams entry, Bob's Dusty, Julio Espinosa, the jockey. We've already told you he's got early speed, may try to use him as a rabbit. The entry may. 1A, the horse, run, dusty, run, highly regarded, prefers a sloppy track. Not the case today. Daryl McHard, the jockey, and a horse well regarded in the current better. And then to the number two horse, out of the famed Darby Dan Farm, and Mr. John Galbraith with a great jockey aboard, Jorge Velasquez. And Sanhedrin in the tradition, perhaps, of Chateau Gay and proud clarion fast finisher. There is the alleged super horse. And yet the horseman looked at him in the Wood Memorial and said no such thing. Thus, 14 opponents here. Unbeaten Seattle Slough, the controversial one, Jean Cruguet aboard, the overwhelming favorite in the race. Horse number four, get the axe. Astride him, a man who's won more than 7,000 races, hopes to get to 8,000, Willie Shoemaker, who's won two derbies in the past, one of the greatest riders ever. Flag officer, a long shot, Leslie Aaron's up, may have the best breeding in the whole race by hoist the flag out of Batua, who was sired by Bold Ruler. 
that bold ruler strain again. The number six off. Affiliate Lafitte Pinkai up. Laz Barrera, trainer of the winner. Bold Forbes a year ago, the trainer here. High on his horse. May make an early go of it. Good early speed. The number seven horse, ridden by Ron Turcotte, the jockey of the famed Secretariat, Western Wind. This is Joe Roebling's horse. This, too, is a late finishing horse. Remember, according to Eddie Arcaro, there must be early speed if Slew is to be beaten. And most feel there's not early speed in this race. Not enough to challenge Slew. For the moment, on Hell Cordero, Winner of two derbies in the last three years aboard, the exciting, glamorous, all-purpose athlete Chuck. And, of course, Leroy Jolly, the trainer, the same bold ruler strain in him. The number nine horse, the surprise of the Hollywood Dave Derby, Steve's friend, Ruben Hernandez, the jockey, paid his own way from Gulfstream to ride the horse in the derby. That's why he's the jock today. Owned by George Steinbrenner of the Yankees. The number 10 horse, a favorite of Eddie R. Carroll's. Giboulet, owned by Jean Levesque, trained by Jacques Dumas. Jeff Fell, tied as leading rider in Gulfstream. Had the look of a mile and a quarter horse until he ran poorly in the bluegrass. The number 11 horse, racing out of the auxiliary gate. He'll be in post position 15. Nostalgia won the stepping stone. Larry Snyder up. You'll see the auxiliary gate in just a moment. He's a long shot. And then to the three field horses. Sir, sir, number 12, Jesus Rodriguez up. La Luna Stable. Leo Asparua is the trainer. And best person will be number 13, as you see him there. Goth Patterson up. He'll be out of the 12th hole. Sir, sir, out of the second hole. We'll review all the post positions for you in a graphic in a moment. And Papalotti, the 14th horse, number 14, actually the 15th in the field. Miguel Rivera, the jockey. Papalotti has disappointed at the Flamingo and in the wood. But he's here today, Osvaldo Cane, the trainer. We told you that we would give you the post positions. Here they are. Sanhedrin in the number one spot. It's a bad spot, but shouldn't impede him since he's a late finish. Sir, sir, in the number two. Bob's Dusty, number three. Seattle Slough, number four. Get the Axe, number five. Flag Officer, number six. Affiliate, number seven. Run Dusty Run, number eight. Western Wind, number nine. For the Moment, number 10. Steve's Friend, number 11. Best Person, number 12. Giboulet, number 13. Papalote, number 14. Nostalgia, racing out of the auxiliary gate, number 15. We'll be right back. Later had the heartbreak of watching Dust Commander win the Derby. But this year, his horse is the favorite. What does he think? Billy, any last-minute strategy change in the idea of Seattle Slew's race for the Derby? What have you told your jockey, Jean Cruguet? Basic strategy is exactly the same. Let the horse come away from the gate the way he likes to do it and uh, get himself in stride and uh, let him use his long, easy stride. Uh, to carry him along and, and uh, uh, don't worry about the how the other horses are running. You run your ride your horse, run your race. He doesn't break that smartly from the gate as you've observed in the past and in the Derby special conditions apply. As you know, there'll be at least one, Bob's Dusty and maybe several horses that'll be scrambling to get the lead. This could pose different conditions for slow. Yes, it will. Um, I expect horses to be in front of us for four ways. And um, it's uh, something we're aware of and uh, something I think the horse will accept. Finally, I spent last evening with your jockey, Jean Cruguet. I found him, in perfect honesty, terribly distressed by things he had been reading and even by some of Eddie Arcaro's statements about the way he rode slow in the Flamingo. And I'm concerned about John's concentration being divided. Now, what's your reaction to all of this? John's cold competitor. And it's very important in the Derby. Uh, this um, the thing about the Derby is uh, the person that uh, finishes first wins the race. And um, Hardtack was cold. Our Carroll was cold. Um, the, uh, and that, I think that's very important. And, and uh, John's the kind of rider you want to have in the Derby. What if Leroy Jolly, for the third year in a row, he brings the son of the great sire, what a pleasure to the post. 
He's a trainer of for the moment. Howard talked to him also. How much chance do you give your horse? Well, I don't give anybody a great deal of chance to beat uh, Seattle Slew. He's a very, very good horse. He's done nothing to beat himself. Uh, he looks like he's trained well and he's fresh and strong, so he's just going to be a tough horse for these horses to have any chance with. But I think that my horse probably has as good a chance or better chance than any of the others. Why better? Well, he's coming up, he's on the improve, and uh, his race with blinkers on in the bluegrass was a very good race. Should the track be muddy, I think it would improve his chances some. But uh, even with all that in consideration, I still think that Seattle's Lou is an outstanding horse, and somebody's going to have to get very lucky to beat him. Horsemen were generally impressed by For the Moment's performance in the bluegrass, especially because the horse had seemed so flat in California. How do you account for the difference? Well, I really can't explain his poor performance in California. He just, uh, whatever it was, he didn't fire, and uh, I guess in sheer desperation, we put some blinkers on him when we got to Kentucky. He put in an outstanding work, and he came back, and he ran that way. So uh, I don't know whether to attribute it to the fact that the track was muddy or he had blinkers on or a combination thereof, but uh, he put in a good race, and we're very happy that he did. As we watch the horses going in, note that Bob's dusty. The horse with the early foot that might be used in an attempted rabbit roll is just inside of Seattle Slough. Now you see the number seven horse, Western Wind, going into the gate. Remember, we have 15 horses in all, an auxiliary gate, and that will be Nostalgia's post position from the auxiliary gate, post position 15. The nine horse, Stevie's friend, going in, and as the rest of the horses go in, let's go up to Chick Anderson for the call of the Kentucky Derby. Chick. Gibelet into the starting gate now. He's moving in right on the outside of the main gate. And he'll be followed in by Papalotti, and then only Nostalgia will still be out of the gate. And he's in that outside auxiliary gate. He's actually in post 15, and he's now moving in behind the gate. We're about ready. They're at post. And they're up. Seattle Slough broke slowly, breaking on the lead. It's Bob's Dusty on the inside for the moment, showing speed on the outside, gets the lead. It's for the moment taking over by two lengths. Then Bob's Dusty Run, Dusty Run. Seattle Slough has moved up along the inside and has moved into second. Coming by us for the moment, the leader, a half Seattle Slough now draws alongside. Bob's Dusty is in third. A gap of two and a half lengths to run Dusty Run, followed by Papalotti. Then Sir, Sir, Steve's friend, best person, get the axe, Sanhedrin, affiliate. On the outside, Gibole. Trailers are Nostalgia, Western Wind, and on the outside, Flag Officer. They're moving to the back stretch. For the moment is along the inside, ahead in front. Seattle Slough is second by four lengths. Bob's Dusty is third by four and a half lengths. Run Dusty Run in fourth by a length and a half. Beginning to move up, Sir, Sir, Steve's friend moves to the outside. Then also Papalotti, best person, Gibole, get the axe and affiliate. They're moving into the turn, and it's two in front or four at the moment by a half length with Seattle Slew drawing alongside again. Bob's Dusty is three lengths back in third, and now Steve's friend is making up ground quickly. He's fourth on the outside. Run Dusty Run is attempting to get through along the rail, and it's also moving up. Then it's six lengths back to the next horse, Sir, Sir. Head of the stretch for the moment. Seattle Slough still battling it out together. And here's Run Dusty Run now closing ground and moving into third. It's Seattle Slough, however, that takes it over at the head of the stretch. Seattle Slough moving away. Now opens two and a half. Run Dusty Run driving up on the outside into second. Steve's friend. Here's Sanhedrin now closing also along the inside. Coming to the wire. Seattle Slough opens it to four lanes. At the finish, it's going to be Seattle Slough, and he's going along easily. He wins it by about two lengths. Ron Dusty run his second, Sam Heathman in third. Then it was very tight for fourth between Steve's friend, Get the Axe, and along the rail, Papalotti. And right now, here is Jim McKay. Well, he's been tested now, all right. He had won six in a row, but they said yes, but he's never been tested. Well, he raced all the way with for the moment. Staved off the challenge, and he's won the Kentucky Derby. Seattle Slough, yes, in fact, may be one of the great horses. He's gotten the first leg on the Triple Crown. And again, the comparisons with Secretariat will be beginning. In second place, unofficially, Run Dusty Run from the 1 and 1A entry. And in third place, John W. Galbraith's 
Sanhedrin. Sanhedrin again was closing very quickly as he did in the Wood Memorial. Here's a look at the finish again. There is Seattle Slu having been challenged as seriously as he could be pulling away from his field again he might have slowed down just a hair coming to the finish line and that's run dusty run in second place and look at Sanhedrin number two closing very fast but there is the winner no question about it Mrs. Karen Taylor's Seattle Slew ridden by the much criticized jockey Jean Fruguet the team has come through and the people who are seeing the Kentucky Derby for the first time saw their horse win. 2.02 is the time, and 1.05 will be back. The finish of the Kentucky Derby has just been made official. The winner is, of course, Seattle Slough. Second place remains with Mrs. Lehman's Run Dusty Run, and third place goes to John Galbraith's Sanhedrin. So that is the official result of the 1977 Kentucky Derby, and what a race it was. Just a marvelous running of the race, beautifully conducted here, and amazingly, the sun came out just about two minutes before post time, stayed out for the whole race. It's out at the moment, but may go back in again in just a couple of minutes. I think, think we're going to get through the presentation without it. I'm standing right now with Lynn Stone, the president of Churchill Downs. Congratulations on a memorable derby, and uh, as always, an extremely well-conducted one, Lynn. Well, Jim, it was a beautiful day. Uh, a little early rain this morning, but uh, the sun did come out, and I guess the sun does shine on Kentucky on the first Saturday in May. It's a gorgeous race. I want to say welcome to all of those who are in attendance and also to those viewing on television. I congratulate the Taylors and Billy Turner and Jean Fruguet. And it's now my pleasure to introduce to you to the governor of the Commonwealth of Kentucky, the Honorable Julian Carroll. Right here is Governor Carroll right here. And Karen, congratulations to you. And Mickey, it's fantastic. Billy, wherever you are, Billy Turner's here somewhere. Jean, marvelous job. Governor? Thank you very much, Jim. Really, the peoples of the world and the people that are here today have seen the greatest and the most exciting horse race in the world. And I know to everyone at least who had their money on Seattle Slough goes our congratulations and certainly on behalf of the people of Kentucky for a Kentucky bred horse goes our personal congratulations to Mickey and Karen Taylor, the owners, to Billy. Billy, you did a great job training that horse, and certainly, John, you're the fellow who rode it across the finish line. Congratulations to you. And now for the trophy to the Taylors. A beautiful trophy for the winner of the 103rd running of the Kentucky Derby to Mickey and Karen Taylor. Give them your applause, please. Any words come to your mind, Karen? Oh, fantastic. <laughs> Vicky, It was beautiful. We didn't have the smoothest trip, but it was great. He's been challenged now, though, and he proved he could do it. Yeah, well, we spotted a few links out of the gate, but he ran well. I'd also like to say hi to Jamie back home. Okay, that's back Jim. at Swan Lake, Washington. And now, yes, to, that, and now to that great t uh, trainer, Billy Turner. Billy, congratulations for a great training job. Thank you, Thank you very much. <laughs> and then to that great jockey, John Fruguet. John, we are so proud of you and really great that you had a chance to ride such a winner across the finish line. The most exciting race, wasn't it? Thank you very much. I'm very, very happy. We used the word at the top of the show, Jean. Formidable. Huh? Yeah, let's go. <laughs> okay. Billy Turner, could you come in for just one minute? I want yes. to say hello to my little friend Jimmy and to my daughter Leslie. Okay. Well, you've done it across America. Billy, would you just come in for a minute? Congratulations on a marvelous job. You took him all the way from the Derby. Thank you ever so much. Were you concerned when he broke slowly? Well, I'm afraid I'm going to have to get used to it because he just, just seems to do that all the time. Okay, but obviously Jean gave him a great ride, and he, as I said to Mickey, he's been challenged now. People said he hadn't been challenged, but he has been, and he had it. That's the most, the most thrilling thing about the whole race was uh, he, got, he broke slowly. He was shut off immediately. He had to overcome adversity, and then he went on to do what, it, to do what he was supposed to do, and uh, it's a sign of a racehorse. I see your wife Paula smiling broadly back there. What are the plans now, Billy? Well, we're going to ship out to After the party. Uh, well, I don't know. I'm so tired. I don't think I'll make the party. <laughs> so, but um, uh, we'll ship out to New York tomorrow morning. Okay. Again, congratulations to you. To the whole team, one of the most likable groups of people we've seen come into racing in a long time, and obviously you're going to stay for a very long time. Again, Mickey and Karen. Governor. 
Jim. Great to see you again. Oh, it's going to be a habit. Jim, now. listen, isn't this exciting to get a chance to Couldn't come be and see a race like this? I tell you, my blood boils every year when I hear that playing of my old Kentucky home. And with that off, and they come across this stretch here, and then we watch them all the way around the back, and they finally come down to the wire. It really makes us feel great that we have such an outstanding race as the Kentucky Derby for the people of the world to see. Well, the sun shone bright, in fact, on your old Kentucky home and your race and on the folk from Swan Lake, Washington. It's a long way from home, but it'll be a happy ride. Thank you, Jim. Okay, let's take a look now at the uh, the official results of the race and the prices, which are now up. Seattle Slough paid three dollars, two eighty and two eighty. Run Dusty Run, three forty and three twenty. That was the entry. If you bet on the Bob's Dusty, you also got paid off there. The third horse, San Hedron, paid four sixty. The winning time, remember, not sensational. Two minutes, two and one fifth second, well off the Derby record of one fifty nine and two fifths set by the great Secretariat. We're going to be coming back here during the final half hour of ABC's Wide World of Sport, Sports to follow up on this story, one that uh, promises to go all through the spring to the Preakness Stakes, which ABC will be televising for the first time this year, just two weeks from today. And that, then, of course, the horses will be going to try to complete the Triple Crown in the Belmont. Those, then, are the official prices. Coming up, as I said, is ABC's Wide World of Sports. You saw some of it uh, before our show, and you're going to see more now. And remember, we will be back here also uh, for some comment during Wide World of Sports. This is Jim McKay with Howard Cosell, Eddie O'Carroll, Frank Gifford, and Chick Anderson, who did a fine call of the race today, saying so long from Churchill Downs.